Hello, it's Craig here with a breakdown for thrusting swords, a popular offhand weapon for non-power stancing. In fact, it is so popular in the PvP community that there is a term called offstock, which you might have seen before. It is short for offhand stock. But if you're following this phrase blindly, it is likely that you're using the wrong offhand, as stock isn't the best option for many builds. So just what exactly is your best option? Let's find out. The discussion for thrusting swords will be split into unique and regular thrusting swords. The regular thrusting swords will be split up into these sections because of the similarities the infusions share. If you want more background information on optimization done in this video, my defense calculations and soft caps guide are linked in the description down below. I also have a Discord server with plenty of information compiled and channels to help answer questions. You can also just come and hang out. First, Let's check out the weapon ranges. Catch, who helps me with the weapon ranges, said the old picture you see here was his first attempt at gathering range data. This is not only missing one thrusting sword, it is also not accurate due to perspective issues. And so, this is the actual range of the thrusting swords. As you can see, the Clean Rot Knight's sword is actually a fair bit longer than the s -talk. Here, I want to employ the tactic of splitting the thrusting swords into the longer thrusting swords and the shorter ones, because the shorter ones all happen to do something unique, so they can't just be dismissed either. Next, apart from the weapon ranges, we should also talk about their movesets. This is the heavy attack and charged heavy attack of the rapier, Clean Rod Knight's sword, and the Ansper rapier. This is the heavy attack and charged heavy attack of the s -talk and Noble's s -talk that does slashing damage instead of piercing. This is the heavy attack and charged heavy attack of the Roger's Rapier. This uncharged heavy attack is extremely quick, coming out faster than even many light attacks, and definitely something you want to consider if you want to main hand thrusting swords. All its heavy attacks are 2 attacks per hit moves. This is the projectile heavy attack and charge heavy attack of the frozen needle. This is one of the two projectile heavy attacks in the game. The other one belongs to the wing of Asto, which I covered in the last video. And yes, this projectile does indeed inflict the cold status effect as well. But do keep in mind, it has much lower poise damage compared to the other heavy attacks. Talking about movesets, this is the third and final weapon type in Elden Ring with a faint move which is a move you can perform by dodging while charging up your heavy attack. I covered the two other weapon types, curved swords and heavy thrusting swords in my two previous videos if you're interested in them. The frozen needle has a unique feint, which is also projectile based, making it a very good option to be feinting with. An interesting thing to note is all the projectiles of the frozen needle do piercing damage, which means that they can counter hit, which is attacking your enemy while they're on recovery frames. Their versus pierce negation will be lowered by 30%. The frozen needle also happens to be the only unique thrusting sword, so let us check out its AR. It is a weapon that only has a physical component and still has a cold status effect, which is quite rare. It scales best to dexterity. At the same stat investment levels, it has lower AR than all the other thrusting swords, but it does come with innate cold buildup and its unique heavy attack and feint. My only gripe with this weapon is its unchangeable weapon art, Impelling Thrust. Yes, this can help you against shields, but it is an overall lackluster weapon art. For the regular thrusting swords, we have the Rapier, Roger's Rapier, s -talk, Noble's s -talk, Clean Rot Knight's Sword, and the Ansper Rapier, which is one of the few weapons with Scarlet Rot that is infusible. Starting with a heavy infusion, I set the dexterity at 20 to meet all the requirements, but after heavy, I will be setting either strength or dexterity to 11 to mirror the strength side of things. You will notice this is just to meet the requirements, and more dexterity does not affect the AR of the weapons. Anyway, we immediately see that the clean rod has higher AR than the s -talk, and is a better choice as it is not only longer but also lighter than the s -talk on the offhand. The stat requirements are exactly the same and the heavy attack difference doesn't matter on the offhand. The same holds true for AD strength. Next, we have fire. As previously stated, I'm dropping dexterity to 11 in order to standardize all the infusions. You must keep in mind the lacking requirements for some of these swords. 
Overall, I don't recommend this infusion because piercing damage can do counter hits. Counter hit damage only applies to the physical damage portion of your attack. And for PvP, enemies have higher fire defense, so avoid this infusion even at the 56 strength mark. For PvE, this will work at the 56 strength mark especially if your enemy is weak to fire. But unless you aren't afraid of the hassle of swapping between infusions, I'd probably just stick to heavy. Next is the Keen Infusion, which most of the Thrusting Swords scale better with. We do see that the s talk has more AR than the Clean Rot, but it's only 1.1% more AR for the reduced range. If you're someone running the Noble Straight Sword over the Broadsword because of the range difference when their AR difference is even larger than 1.1%, I think you'll easily be convinced that you would rather take the noticeably longer range on your Clean Rot over a tiny bit more damage. Not to mention, that 0.5 weight might make one point of endurance difference too. Because the s talk scales better to dexterity, it actually pulls ahead at the 80 dexterity mark, now having 2.2% more AR over the clean rot. At this point, it is more of a preference, I believe. Although, oftentimes, you lead into attacks from another hit, so the longer range might not make as much of a difference as 2.2% more AR. When it comes to lightning infusion, it works a lot better than fire infusion for two reasons, even though they're mirror scaling of each other on the other stat. Firstly, investing into dexterity allows you to meet the dexterity requirements without wasted stats, unlike the fire infusion. Secondly, for PvP, lightning defense is always the lowest defense. Again, check my defense calculation video if you don't understand this. And on lightning, the clean rod beats the s talk. I would say the lightning is at least worth a consideration at 56 dexterity, but I would go for keens at 80 due to counter hit damage only working off physical. Quality infusion does not produce any surprises, which means at meta PvP levels, it's just bad for the amount of stat points invested. Heavy or keen will always outdo quality. Quality is mostly for endgame PvE when you have 99 strength and dexterity and want to maximize physical damage. And it is here that I want to discuss a few of the other thrusting swords before we move on. First, if you've been looking at the numbers, you'll realize that Ansper always loses out on AR regardless of the infusion, but not by much. This is quite a strong rape here as it is one of the few weapons that is infusible despite having Scarlet Rot. Since Scarlet Rod doesn't scale to Arcane, I only suggest running Scarlet Rod weapons when you have more than one source of Scarlet Rod, like Power Stancing and Spur Rapiers for example. Another weapon I want to talk about is the Noble's s talk which weighs one less than the s talk and is longer by a few pixels of range, but tends to lose out on more AR. They share the same moveset and both scale better to dexterity. So even if you drop an extra point for weight requirements, the s talk will still easily have the AR lead. For optimization purposes, this would be eliminated. And the last weapon I want to discuss in this interlude is the Rapier, the lightest and shortest thrusting sword that has an amazing crit boost of 130. So a question you might be having is, does the Rapier outdo the Misery Cord in terms of crit? If you haven't watched my Daggers video, I dive deeper into some crit mechanics there. You should probably watch that too if you're interested in some crit secrets. One thing I mentioned there is, the crit boost multiplier is directly baked into the base MV of the backstab and repulse damage percent. Since weapons have different base multipliers for critical hits, it doesn't always mean a higher crit boost will always do more crit damage. But it just so happens that daggers do have the highest base MV for both backstabs and repulse. Analyzing the MV, we see that the Misery Cord has 37.1% higher MV on the backstab and 30.5% higher MV on the repost. Since the damage calculation before defense and negation is simply AR times MV, the other part we have to look at is the AR. Let's use the dexterity scaling infusions, which favor the rapier. The rapier has 12.8% or 17.1% more AR. This means that the Misery Cord is, as expected, better for crits than a rapier if crit alone is what you're looking for, but unless you're doing a pure crit build with the weapon art. The rapier's main hand moveset and length makes it easier to use than a misery cord. This is especially true if you don't want to weapon swap for crits, and you're comparing the rapier to the other thrusting swords. 
Despite losing out on AR, you will be doing more crit damage than other thrusting swords. Therefore, for PvE especially, I wouldn't discount the rapier if you find yourself often doing critical hits. Flame and Sacred are two sides of the same coin. You're just picking between the element. Clean Rod leads here once again for both 50 faith and 80 faith, which means that the same thing goes for magic. Clean Rod also beats the S-Talk here. Next, starting from the Cold Infusion, I am going to split and rearrange the weapons. The Clean Rod scales better to strength, while the Noble's S-Talk scales equally well to strength and dexterity, and the other thrusting swords all scale better to dexterity. We do see here that S-Talk beats the Clean Rod by a larger margin than it did on Keen Infusion, especially when the Clean Rod here needs two more points in dexterity. But scaling to strength in this case can be a big boon for the Clean Rod. Two weapon types that are quite meta in PvP and pair well with an offhand thrusting sword are the Halberds and the Ultra Great Spears. I mean, the Ultra Great Swords, otherwise known as Colossal Swords in Elden Ring. Both weapon types have options that scale better with strength. The Colossal Swords, in particular, pretty much prefer strength, especially due to their high strength requirements, so keep that in mind. This is for the 71 point investment for Cold Infusion. You will notice, the Noble's S-Talk is particularly poor on status infusions because it scales equally well to strength and dexterity. All that means on the flip side is, it doesn't scale well to either one. For my viewers who are not yet asleep and staring at the numbers diligently, you will realize the Ants per Rapier is kinda weird. Where the hell did the Scarlet Rod go? Why the heck does it only have 66 frost buildup? This weapon has been bugged since the very start. It loses its Scarlet Rod buildup after upgrading it past plus 5. I don't know why this isn't fixed yet, but don't use the answer on code until it is fixed. Poison and Blood Infusion basically scales the same way, and you're just picking between the statuses, which will most of the time be bleed over poison. Just like the code status infusion, the S-Talk beats the Clean Rod in terms of AR, but they scale better to different stats. And for the Bleed Infusion screen, I'm showing the clean rod with a slightly different stat distribution, but same amount of investment level. You will see that they're pretty close in terms of AR, because poison and blood infusion doesn't scale AR that well to begin with. I'm just showing you that this isn't that big of a concern. A particularly good thrusting sword with the status effect infusions is the Roger's Rapier with its double hit, which is especially quick. I would stay away from the cult infusion, unless you're on an arcane build and happen to want to swap to a thrusting sword, or use it as support. At same stat investment levels, a cult always loses straight up to heavy or keen when the weapon doesn't have a base status buildup that scales to arcane. As a reminder, Scarlet Rod doesn't scale to arcane. Alright, let's do a quick summary. The Frozen Needle doesn't particularly stand out aside from its projectile based heavy attack, which also makes it a very good weapon to use the thrusting sword's faint attacks with. No shame using this weapon as a wand, because I would expect you to run this weapon to spam the heck out of its projectiles. Roger's Rapier is good for its extremely quick heavy attacks. Run this with a status effect infusion for maximum potency. The Rapier is a great PvE tool, especially if your build often incorporates critical hits. It isn't the Misery Cord, but it easily outperforms all the other thrusting swords when it comes to crit. So, if you want the Thrusting Sword moveset combined with the option to do high critical damage, this is your go-to. The Clean Rods is, I would say, overall the best offhand Thrusting Sword, so the term really shouldn't be off-stock, but off-rot. The S-Talk scales better at the same investment level for Keen Infusion and status effects. However, the AR difference is only more noticeable at 80 dexterity for Keens, and not 56. And the Ants per Rapier is the fastest infusible weapon with Scarlet Rot. Don't run the code infusion with the Ants per, as it is still bugged. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe, so I can keep bringing you the best analytical content. Krite, signing out.